Mark Faber joins us from Thailand. He, of course, the editor of the Gloom, Doom, and Boom Report. Mark, what about the Fed in this situation? How do they fit into the equation vis-a-vis -vis markets and as a whole, the economy, wherever you want to take them? What's going on with the Federal Reserve? Well, what is happening with all central banks is that they have been essentially printing money. In other words, they've been increasing the quantity of money uh, through asset purchases and expanding their balance sheet. And, and I suppose it won't be that easy to find an exit strategy. Well, but their and exit strategy is their target goals. They will continue to essentially print money in the years to come. Now, could it be that for a while they reduce the asset purchases or stop altogether? Yes, that's a possibility. Well, but there, but there have they, triggers in terms of whether or not they do that, though. It up very strongly as occurred in '87. And the real economy does not participate. And as you know, this recovery since June 2009 has bypassed, say, the majority of Americans. But he's and made it. But if it happened, it would be a major embarrassment for the Federal Reserve. But the Federal Reserve has given us specific targets. They've given us unemployment and inflation targets. They've told the American public that that's their cue. That's when the American public can expect. A, a relative easing of that quantitative easing, if you will. In yes. other words, the Fed's going to spend less money. Do you not take yes. them at their word? Yes. How about uh, if unemployment never drops below 7%? Well, then they leave the, the quantitative easing stimulus apparently printing still. And, yes. they, and so what's the tipping but, point uh, if they no do that? No matter how much you print and, how much, uh, and for how much longer you have artificially low interest rates, asset markets can also go down unless you have forgotten that housing went down after 2007. Which it has, but markets, markets kind of ebb and flow. It, again, if there's a crash, I hear a lot that the Fed's printing too much money and that it, it's just this is going to end in tears. But if I sat on the sidelines, I've missed 120-odd percent from the March 09 lows. I don't know that there's that much enthusiasm or euphoria, if you will, in regards to corporate earnings or the outlook for the economy as a whole. So I guess what I get to is, is where do we reach that tipping point? When does all this printing come back and bite us in the hindquarters? Well, I was very fortunate to participate in this rise of 120 percent, as you say. In fact, I participated in rises of 250 percent in markets like Thailand, the Philippines, Indonesia. And uh, since last year, since September, when the S&P went to 1474, I turned more cautious, but advised investors to invest in Vietnam and in Japan, uh, both of which have done reasonably well. And I think there are some opportunities in European telecom stocks at the present time. So European telcos, how could a U.S. investor get access to these things? Are there ETFs? Are there ADRs? What would I do to go ahead and get invested in some of these European companies you're talking about? Or for that matter, the, the Vietnamese or Thai companies? Well, there are some ETFs, and uh, people can actually open an account in Vietnam or trade through a Singapore broker and purchase uh, Vietnamese shares. How each investor wants to do that, uh, each investor will have to ask his financial planner and not me.